So since uh, the EU law is a documentation has been introduced, um, what are some of the reasons parties have opted to trade under a French or an Irish law master agreement? Judith, I'll, I'll ask you to answer that first. Sure. Well, in our experience, generally speaking, these reasons have fallen into three main categories. Firstly, EU regulated parties that have undertaken contractual remediation exercises with respect to agreements governed by third country laws for BRRD purposes are opting for the Irish or French versions to limit the likelihood of having to undertake such further exercises, effectively hedging against change of law risk, if you would. Also, in the context of a more general post-Brexit uptick that we're seeing in the use of Irish law to govern international financial arrangements more generally, unrelated to the jurisdiction of any particular party, the Irish law is fits very nicely into that, enabling parties to use Irish law uh, for all related finance documents, including ISDAs, and I'm sure that's an experience with French law as well. Having said that, the primary reason that we are seeing for opting for Irish or French law is does, um, is the availability of the Brussels recast regulation regime for the automatic recognition and enforcement throughout the EU of choice of EU court agreements and judgments of the EU courts. This is perceived as highly beneficial as compared to any alternative regime, and I really can't overemphasize its importance to a party whose counterparty is either operating out of or has assets against which the party may want to enforce located in an EU member state. Thanks, Judith. Uh, Alban, anything to add? I mean, very similar outcome from a French law uh, contract perspective. Um, uh, it has been said, and I believe Judith uh, said it all very well, but it, it cannot be overemphasized that the judicial passport is the first and principal reason. Uh, even if one is, is convinced of the superiority of English law in terms of flexibility and predictability, the difficulties that particip uh, market participants will encounter in enforcing an English court decision on the territory of the European Union will increase. And I do not believe that the ratification currently under consultation by the United Kingdom of the Hague Convention is likely to resolve any of these difficulties. There's a world of difference between the harmonization of the condition of exequatur on the one hand and the automatic, immediate, and costless enforcement provided by the European judicial cooperation system on the other hand. Uh, I won't add anything more uh, to what's been said uh, already. It's it's the, the, the first and, and I think determining reason why he's done make the move. Um, so, Alban, what kinds of legal protections and benefits are available to contracts such as the SDU law documents? Well, as far as Irish law is concerned, I mean, Irish law is, uh, as is well known, very similar to, to English law. And from this point of view, I think that the benefits and protection enjoyed by current user of English law contracts are largely intact and preserved under Irish law. So the question is, therefore, I think, mostly relevant for the French law contract, which obviously represents um, a more considerable jump, if you want, for market participants. So I'll therefore, if you allow uh, me, uh, concentrate more on, on this contract. And I will first say that it's the first and only to date civil law contract published by ISDA. Uh, now 24 of the uh, EU member states are civil law jurisdiction. Uh, civil law is a written law, uh, easily uh, accessible and inexpensive to access because it does not require complex analysis of case law. Um, I also believe that French law specifically offers very strong advantages for market participants wishing to deal with civil law. First, it is um, a contractual law with two pillars uh, that are contractual freedom and contractual security. Um, I want to uh, emphasize on one thing is that French courts are particularly respectful of the legal characterization given by parties to their contract. This, um, and this is not neutral, obviously, uh, when one knows that in many European jurisdictions, the benefit of the safe harbor in, ben in bankruptcy is reserved only to derivative product. Uh, we've seen recently example of court decisions in France that have barred the claims of insolvency trustee who sought to re 
recharacterize prepaid forward equity swap transaction as financing on the sole ground that their economic effect was equivalent to a financing and the courts enforced the safe harbor and refused to recharacterize the derivative that had been structured in this way perfectly legally and knowingly by the parties. I would also say that French contract law has been recently modernized and it, con it continues to adapt itself to be the best possible receptacle uh, for the ISDA contract. Also, consumer law is not applicable in business relationship under French law and remains confined uh, to private individuals. Uh, the system of proof is also very flexible and allows, for example, the full enforceability of ISDA protocols as a way to validly amend an existing agreement. And finally, uh, it's a jurisdiction where there is no example of the closeout netting being challenged by a court, including in bankruptcy. Thanks, Alban. Um, so, Judith, in addition to some of the contractual protections and benefits, how uh, are court judgments related to the EU law documents recognized and enforced? Well, this will, of course, depend on the court from which the judgment originates and where it needs to be recognized and enforced. And it's worth mentioning in that context that both the Irish and the French ISDA provides an option of exclusive and non-exclusive jurisdiction for the courts of that jurisdiction, reflecting the modern approach taken to the English and New York law versions of ISDA's in ISDA's uh, 2018 Choice of Court and Governing Law Guide. However, as mentioned earlier, the Brussels recast regime, under that regime, an in-scope judgment for an Irish or French court is automatically recognised and enforced in every other EU member state as if it was a judgment of the courts of that other EU member state. This is absolutely crucial and no other regime, whether the Lugano Convention, the 2005 Hague Convention, the 2019 Hague Convention or the domestic laws of any jurisdiction of which I am aware, affords that automatic recognition and enforcement. So that is really a key advantage here. Thank you. That's very helpful. Um, so. Just turning quickly to the uh, terms of the contracts themselves. So for parties that are familiar with the uh, English law as a document, what would you uh, point out to them as being uh, substantive differences? Alban, do you want to take that one first? Yeah, I think obviously the, the French law contract is the one that has most uh, uh, changes uh, from the English one, but those changes were kept to a minimum. Um, the idea was not to make another contract, despite the change to civil law, but a civil uh, law version of the 2002 contract. Um, in the end, we are talking about five minor changes, none of which affect Section 5 and 6 of the contract, i.e. the core provision of the closeout netting and its mechanics. Um, in addition to the changes to the jurisdiction clause and the applicable law, which you will agree with me, Catherine, where the obvious minimum things we had to do, um, I would mention three things. First, we have integrated within the body of the contract the Metavente protocol uh, into the French agreement, uh, and thus change Section 2A3 of the contract in the manner recommended after the publication of the 2002 contract by ISDA, just to reflect the issues faced by those diversions of interpretation of the clause uh, from English and, and New York uh, uh, courts and, and fix uh, the issue the way ISDA recommended to do. Second, we have clarified that payment netting in France does not operate by way of novation. Not a huge change, we've just deleted by novation uh, in, the, in the relevant provision. And third, we have also deleted the reference to any enforcement of the contract thought in equity because uh, it's not an open route uh, in civil law or before uh, French court. The rest, as I said, is unchanged and the parties uh, willing to switch from English to French law, they are existing contract can do so by using a very short standard form amendment agreement provided for this purpose, 
without changing any of the other financial or legal parameters of their schedules, such as default threshold or specified entities and so on, that were otherwise agreed in the existing schedule. Judith, what about in the Irish law version? Well, um, from the perspective of the Irish law versions of, of all of the ISTA documents, um, for which they've been created, the changes are not at all substantive. In the case of the 2002 ISDA Master Agreement, they are limited to those expressly required to transition the choice of courts and governing law provisions of those agreements to Irish courts and law. And they reflect the approach taken to those choices with respect to the English law version by ISDA's 2018 ISDA Choice of Court and Governing Law Guide. In the case of the title transfer credit support documents, again, there are no substantive differences. Now, as we all know, ISDA is supporting Irish and French law versions of the 2002 and not the 1992 ISDA master agreement. And so provisions specific to the 1992 ISDA have been removed and amendments made to the English law version of the 2002 agreement by the 2002 ISDA master agreement protocol have been um have have been made amendments made to the English law version of of the um of the 1995 credit support annex have been made uh, where relevant so there is one example i think of an eu legislative reference being updated and uh, that was just in the elections and variables section of the variation margin csa so it's a little bit like those games we used to play as children uh, where you got two pictures and you were trying to spot the difference very difficult to see the differences uh, between the master agreement and the title transfer credit support documents uh, under irish and english law and in fact even in the security interest documentation the changes are minimal. Again, we're obviously changing references to the Irish law and courts to from English law and courts to Irish law and courts. We're also replacing some references to English laws and English law concepts uh, with equivalent Irish law references. Or in one case, deleting them. For example, there's no Irish equivalent to the English Contracts Rights of Third Parties Act 1999. So we don't need an equivalent of the disapplication of that act that's included in the English version. However, I would like to emphasise that it's really not just the fact that the Irish and English documents are on very similar terms that is important to people considering which document to use, um, and particularly to those already familiar with the English versions. Because for those who are familiar with the English versions, the similarity of the Irish and English legal systems, and insofar as relevant to ISDA documentation, the contract law of England and Ireland, and the precedential value afforded to decisions of the English courts before the Irish courts, should also provide comfort that expectations as regards how the documents would be interpreted and operate should be respected. Mm -hmm.